Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. I'm Tyler Patner, and today we're going to be giving you seven things that you need to know about air gun optics, more specifically scopes. The wide world of air gun optics can be a little bit tricky to navigate, so the goal here is to get you guys more familiar with what you're going to see on our website and hopefully give you a better idea of what you're going to need when we look at air gun optics. Now starting with our first point, there are three different tube sizes that you need to be aware of. There are one inch tubes, 30 millimeter tubes, and 34 millimeter tubes. There are other sizes out there on the market, but those are the three predominant ones. And when we talk about tube size, we are talking about the outside diameter of this tube here. What this really determines is what size mounts you need, and that's an important thing as well that we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, but the tube size is typically going to be related to the amount of travel that the internal internal tube inside of here has. So the amount of adjustment range you have for long range shooters, this is going to be a very important thing. It is also going to play a big part in the weight of the scope. Now that's not to say that every one inch tube scope is going to be lighter than every 30 millimeter tube scope, but as a general rule of thumb, the larger the tube size, typically the heavier the optic. The second thing to be aware of is what's called parallax adjustment. Now parallax is basically focus for the layman. Uh, but it's kind of more complicated than that. But the whole idea is to get the scope reticle inside of the scope on the same focal plane as your eye and your target. Uh, usually you adjust for this with either a front focus or a side focus system. Uh, now these are just two different systems of achieving the same thing. There are also a couple other types of parallax adjustment out there. Uh, and also there are fixed parallax scopes like the one on this Gamo here. Personally, I would not recommend those for air gun use because when I say fixed parallax, what that means is that that is set to be very clear at like 35, 50, maybe 100 yards depending on the scope. And it's not going to be super crisp and crystal clear at other distances. Now again, this does depend somewhat on the magnification of the optic overall, but basically having an adjustable parallax system allows you to get a nice, clear, clean image at just about any distance. And when we talk about typical air gun distances, that's from 10 yards out to infinity, however far you are going to shoot your air gun. So you really wanna key in on optics that have a 10 yard minimum parallax setting. There are a few that go under that, but there are also some that are set much longer than that. So you will see 25 yard minimum parallax settings, 50 yard minimum parallax settings. It really depends on what you want to do. Most of the stuff that we sell here at Pyramid Air is either 10 or 15 yards. So you're safe there, but something to keep in mind as you browse optics elsewhere, you want to make sure that you're getting a minimum parallax setting that is going to correspond to the shortest distance that you want to shoot. Next up at number three, we are talking focal planes. Now a couple more examples here. You have second focal plane scopes and first focal plane scopes. Practically what this means for you guys out there, second focal plane scopes are gonna be great for target shooting, people shooting at fixed distances, or folks looking for the uh, thinnest reticle that they can find at every magnification. Uh, because the reticle does not scale with magnification though, as you change mag, you are going to need to kind of recalibrate your holdovers or hold unders. So if you are clicking a lot, if you're making click adjustments for different distances to compensate for your trajectory, a second focal plane scope is gonna be just fine for you. First focal plane optics though, that reticle scales with magnification. So your holdovers never change. What I typically recommend first focal plane scopes for are people that are hunting at different distances that don't have a lot of time to react to those distances and aren't going to be click adjusting. That's where the big one comes in. If you're doing a lot of long range target shooting or hunting at different distances, second focal plane is probably not going to serve you quite as well as first is. So first focal plane is going to be the way to go for those applications. The big distinction outside of the function is the price. Typically your second focal plane optics are going to start lower priced than your first focal plane stuff. So you're going to see second focal plane scopes from $50 and up. Really where first focal plane comes in is right around 300 bucks right now. And obviously they can go up into the thousands of dollars like this element Nexus here. So there's a lot of different examples there. And obviously you have a lot of different features built into these scopes. Uh, but for you hunters out there, first focal plane is going to be something that you're going to want to look at. Or if you are shooting a lot of different distances quickly and you don't have time to click adjust, that's where first focal plane is going to shine as well. 
And number four, reticle types. There are a million and a half different reticles out there. You really have to do your due diligence on what's gonna work best for you and your application. Uh, simplistically, you have like your standard crosshairs or duplex reticles. Then you kind of work into mill dot reticles, which is gonna give you a bunch of different reference points. And then from there, it really explodes into a world of craziness. Uh, some good, some bad. It really depends on what your use is, whether you like a cleaner, just kind of standard windage and elevation line type reticle uh, with marks on it or not, or if you want something that has what we commonly refer to as a Christmas tree style reticle. Uh, these are super common now, Hawk, Athlon, Meopta, Element, they all have them in their lineups, uh, and they're all different purposes uh, in terms of what you're going to use them for or where you might use them, and it really uh, is going to behoove you to do a little research to find out maybe for your applications what you're going to need most. Now, personally, I'm not a huge fan of those Christmas tree style reticles. I find that they get in the way a little bit, but if you have to make elevation and windage holds at a one point in time, they can really come in handy out in the field. So it is something that you should consider depending on what kind of shooting you're doing. And number five, we're talking about Springer ratings. Now, this is gonna be applicable to those of you that are using your scopes on spring or gas piston air rifles, where you have what we call a bi-directional recoil. So that's where the rifle recoils backwards and forwards in a very fast time. And even with spring guns, you do have some torque involved in there as that spring lets its energy out. Now, most of the optics that we sell, actually almost all of the optics that we sell here at Pyramid Air are spring gun rated from pretty much every company that we represent, whether it's Leapers, Hawk, Athlon, Meopta, or Element Optics, uh, any of those brands are gonna be Springer rated, and it is something that you should keep in mind. But if you're looking elsewhere in the optics world for a scope, it's something where you can always call the manufacturer. Most of them know what you're asking when you say, hey, is this scope Springer rated? It's a good thing to ask to make sure at the very least that they will warranty it if you have a problem while using it on your spring or gas ram gun. And number six, we're gonna talk a little bit about mounts. Now, this is an even broader world than the optics themselves. I'm gonna try and parse this down as best I can for you guys. So a couple considerations. You have a two-piece system like you see here, and you have one-piece mounts. Now, typically one-piece mounts, I'm gonna recommend for spring and gas piston guns uh, predominantly. This takes up a lot of rail space, so if you're not using a spring or gas piston, uh, I would go with two-piece setup. What this one-piece setup is gonna do is actually cancel some of the recoil that would happen with a two-piece mount setup uh, from that spring gun, kind of kicking back and forward there in that bi-directional recoil sequence. The second thing to consider is dovetail or Weaver Picatinny style mounts. So uh, if your gun has an 11 millimeter dovetail, these are the kind of mounts that you're gonna wanna go with. If you are dealing with a Weaver Picatinny system like you see on this Edgun Leshy 2, then you are gonna wanna go with Weaver Picatinny mounts. Pretty simple there. But within that, you do also have some quick release options like you see here. Uh, just different ways to mount the optic, uh, something to consider as you're going along if you are gonna be taking the scope off. QRs are nice to have. Uh, another consideration to make there is making sure that you're getting the right height mounts. Now, this is a question we get a lot. Uh, there are three common types, I suppose, low, medium, and high. Basically, guys, if you are using a 40 millimeter or smaller objective lens, that's this part of the scope right here, you're gonna wanna go with a medium or maybe a low mount. If you are going with 44 millimeter or larger, you are gonna wanna go with high almost every time. So something to keep in mind there as you are looking. Some other considerations you may have to make, you may want to get a uh, dovetail adapter if you wanna go from a dovetail to a Weaver Picatinny system, like this UTG adapter, they're all over the place. They make little single ones as well for your PCP guns. So a lot of different options there if you have a dovetail but you prefer Weaver Picatinny. The other thing to consider is droop compensation. Now this is actually a droop compensated mount, so there's a bit of a downward angle to it, which is going to be very beneficial for you long range shooters. They also make uh, adjustable mounts here. You can see these FX No Limit rings that actually pivot there. Uh, what that's going to do, again, give you that same ability to adjust your scope angle, which is going to allow you to use more of that scope's adjustment range, particularly as you start to stretch out to longer distances. At the seven spot, we are going to talk about proper scope installation. Now, 
For me, I really detest the act of mounting a scope with levels because you gotta, you gotta fight with the gun. You gotta make sure it's level. Uh, not only the scope itself on the rings, but the gun, wherever you're holding it, it's, it can be a pain, all right? Let's be honest. One thing I found really helpful that we just started selling here at Pyramid Air are fix-it sticks. This is the scope jack. This thing is awesome. This will mount to any Picatinny rail and basically this will level you up just right off the scope saddle here. It's a super simple system. Matt Dubber turned me on to this. This is a great tool to have in your arsenal. Uh, and if you have dovetail air guns predominantly, you can always grab you some of these UTG Picatinny adapters, slide it right in there. It'll work on your dovetails as well. The other part of scope installation that's really important to know is making sure that you're using the right torque specs for your mounts and your bases. If you're not doing that, you can run into issues down the road, you know, maybe your scope's moving or something like that, or if you torque it down too hard, you can actually uh, hurt the scope internals themselves. So something to keep in mind, Fix-It Sticks makes a torque limiter kit that's gonna be great for all of those purposes. Comes with a bunch of different bits as well as the torque limiter. This is gonna come in really handy, you know, as you kind of use different stuff, right? If you have different types of mounts, uh, they all come with different ratings in terms of torque specs. So that kit is gonna set you up for success when it comes to mounting your scope. And quite frankly, it's something that you should have in your toolkit in general. Thanks for joining us today as we tell you seven things that you need to know when it comes to air gun optics. Hopefully you found this video helpful. You know, if you did, drop us a comment below. Let us know what you didn't know before that you know now. Or if there's something we missed, let us know down below. We can always do another video on it. Uh, obviously, this is just a brief overview. We could go way more in depth on all of this stuff. So if there's something you'd like to see, let us know. As always, throw us a like. Uh, go ahead, follow us on Facebook and Instagram as well. We'd appreciate that a ton. And I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'm Tyler Patner for The Insider. We'll see you next time.